Mr. Vito, can you give us something of the director's viewpoint on Miss Lola Regida? I found uh, Gina a very cooperative person to work with. She has a remarkable sense of what's good for her character. She has a wonderful ability at designing her own clothes and making herself up to look her best. And uh, she's a hard-working actress, actress, and she's uh, really a joy to work with and inspi inspiration to work with. The question I'm often asked, are stars like Gina Lilla Brigida the same off the screen as they are on? Well, I remember an incident where in the town Zaragoza in Spain, about a thousand people were looking up at her window, window and uh, uh, she came out a side door of the hotel and walked right through the crowd, and uh, no one recognized her at all. She looked so plain and, and, and the hat pulled down over her face and nothing like the, the, the person on the screen. She did it on, uh, deliberately. She went on down the street to look at some film, some rushes, and not a soul recognized her at all. And another time, I wandered in a room, and I thought it was probably a sister sitting over in a chair, and I started to say, where's Gina? But I didn't, and she turned around. I'm glad I didn't say it. This film has a strong religious theme, the story of Solomon and Sheba. What is it that has attracted you to this subject at this particular time? Well, I was first attracted to the, the, the story of Solomon and Sheba because Solomon uh, worshipped one god and Sheba had pagan gods and had many gods. And I felt that this theme would uh, hold my interest over the necessary time that it takes to make a film, two years, and would also give me something of a profound, solid nature to fall back on whenever the sex scenes or the battle scenes were uh, exhausted or wherever they were boring, it would always, it would give me something to unify the whole picture. You mentioned battle scenes just now. This is something I particularly like about your work, Mr. Vidor. War and Peace, for example. What about the new film? Well, we have three battles in this, and each design is different th from the other. And I've tried to make each design that, uh, so that it would be clear to the audience. And uh, they're done somewhat stylized, and they're done, I felt, uh, more like a choreographer than, uh, than a motion picture director at the time. And they're done so that uh, the audience will understand and know which side is which, rather than just a jumble of people. And without depending upon costumes, we uh, depend more on the mass movements of people rather than the individual costume. And your film, of course, is in large screen color. Yes, uh, it's in uh, Super Technorama 70, I think it's called. And, uh, which I firmly believe in. It's as big as a proscenium march in a theater, and it's not uh, like a little window or a stamp viewed from afar off. The screen more, uh, more or less embraces the audience, and I think that's where it should be. It's, uh, it's, it's about as big as the, as the stage set, and that, that's, to me, a way of the size that the film should be. I think it's true to say that you're something of a pioneer in the field of wide screens. Yes, I made a black and white film in uh, 1934 in uh, grandeur film, 70 millimeter film, and then it was suppressed up, up until recently. It's been a great pleasure, Mr. Vida, to have you with us and to hear about the new film. Thank you very much indeed. It's been a pleasure, thank you. Mr. William Wyler, last week, flew in from Rome for the premiere of his latest film, The Big Country. We're privileged to have him on this program. Mr. Wyler, The Big Country runs for nearly three hours. What do you feel about long films? Well, I feel that length is always dictated by interest, by interest alone, and it's not measured in, in feet or yards. Uh, I believe a 10-minute film could be too long and that a three-hour film might be too short. However, this depends on individual likes and tastes. Do you think that the long film will help to change the pattern of the cinema program and that the double bill will go out? Well, I don't know if it will. I would like to see it go out. I think the double bill is a curse. It's unfortunate that 
So many people seem to prefer quantity to quality. I notice your films are very varied. What do you look for when you're making a film? Story, theme? Yes, first and above all, story and theme. Then I try to cast it as well as I can with talented actors. Uh, I don't like the word message, but do, in fact, in your subjects, look for a message? Yes, subject. I do. I think message is a, is a bad word, as you say. But uh, if it means that I believe a film should have something to say, and that, I suppose, is a message. I think it should make people think and feel, if possible, long after they've left the theater. Of course, it must be carefully handled, and they mustn't feel that they're being uh, talked at or preached to. You know, they must above be, above all, be entertained. Isn't it strange that an English girl, Jean Simmons, to be playing the part of a girl born and bred in the West? Yes, indeed. I'm glad you asked me that. Uh, it, it is not uh, the girl one would first think of, an English girl in a, in a Western. But the, the thing I consider first is the talent. And, and believe me, this girl is just full of it. She plays comedy and dramatic scenes with, with equal facility. And it's quite a credit to her performance, I think, that I've heard no American ask the question that you did. <laughs> They've accepted her completely as the Western girl born on the range among Indians and cowboys. <laughs> now, if anyone should know, you should. How do you define star quality? Well, I think talent above all. Without talent, there is no stardom. How did you find Audrey Hepburn? Well, I came to London about five, six years ago in search of a young girl to play the part of this princess. I was looking for, for an English girl because I didn't want the girl to have an American accent since she was to be European. I'd met a number of young uh, aspiring actresses, among them Audrey, and she, she made very good impression. She was attractive, had a personality. We made a test of her, which turned out extraordinarily well. And one could see in the test that she was a fine comedian, which was just what I needed. So we cast her in the part. That's the story. It's so very, quite simple. One of the success story, too. Well, thank you once again, Mr. Wilder, for coming along on this no, program. And may I say again how very privileged we feel to have you on it. Thank you.